Rawr. We are hippity hopping into the castle today, and you can probably guess that the first thing I did was draw a bunch of environment pieces. This was great, but castle levels are notorious for having lava at the bottom, and this was a little bit tricky due to my complete incompetence, but we got there in the end. Now, the lava is home to Podaboos, which are the little fireball guys that jump up and down. So I drew some sprites for this which looked pretty cute, and then I could slap them together with some particles so it looked like it was actually hopping out of the lava. I can also control how many Podaboos are in one spot, which leads to some interesting results, so maybe it's best to move on. I love pain and suffering, and that's what fire bars are all about. You just think you can get past them, and then at the last moment they slap you in your face with their fiery balls. Since I already had fireball sprites all the way from episode 2, I could simply make them zoom around a central point, and boom, we have a fire bar. Alright, we have a couple of new things in the game, and it's honestly pretty hot. I mean, it is. It's fire and lava and stuff. I'm very funny. But another enemy that you can find in castles are dry bones. I think they're really cute, and because they are literal skeletons, they were pretty difficult to draw. But hey, I think they turned out okay. And just like me, these guys are dead inside, so you can't actually kill them, but when you jump on their face, or lack thereof, they crumble down for a bit, and this was a lot of fun to code. Whenever they break apart, they get separated into different body segments, and then these bones get forces added to them in random directions. After a while, they come back together, but it's honestly so satisfying to keep breaking these guys apart, and just seeing what them funky bones do. Dry bones can also throw parts of themselves. I'm not quite sure how that works, but it does, so that's all we care about. So yeah, a bit of a different enemy. Nice. The next guy I worked on was the Thwamp. These funny little goobers were pretty easy to put together. They simply check beneath themselves for Mario, and if he ever passes that line, they go into Angie mode and move downwards until they find some floor to land on. I know that adding squeeze to these guys doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I think it fits with the art style, and I like it, so you can't tell me what to do. So we have bony and stony boys, and they're pretty spooky, but you know what else is spooky? Ghosts. I think the boo sprite turned out really cute, I'm super happy with it, and it moves towards Mario, but only if Mario is facing in the other direction. The structure is basically like that. If the boo is to the left of Mario, and Mario is facing towards it, the ghost gets spooked and doesn't move. But when Mario turns around, he pretty much gets jump scared. Alright, now we're getting to the main event of the castle. That is, of course, the king of the Koopas, Bowser. He's the final boss of the game, and so I want to spend a bit more time on his sprite, making it look both like the original as well as the more modern version that we all know and love today. This is how it turned out, and for someone who's not an artist, I'm gonna say, yeah, it's Bowser. I think I did pretty okay. So I put him into the game, but he wasn't very menacing. He just does his little hippity hops from side to side, which is pretty cute, but he obviously has other ways to bring death upon the Mushroom Kingdom. The first of these is fireballs, and in the original game they seem a bit random, so that's exactly what I did here. Every few seconds Bowser just spawns a bunch of fiery balls and they're launched towards Mario. And of course I used Unity's particle system for the funky effects. The second attack pattern uses hammers, and because I already made the hammer bro, I could simply use the same logic with Bowser, and we get something that works pretty well on the first attempt. Now, we have Bowser attacking Mario, but what about the other way around? The way that Mario defeats him is through this glowing axe. We all know that when Mario pokes the axe, the world explodes or something, I don't know, I didn't read the, the manga. So I wrote a few lines of code and created an animation for hitting the axe, and Throughout this series, I was so focused on making Bowser the most exciting point of the game, making him the most vicious, most terrifying enemy. But maybe the real enemies were the friends we made along the way. Thanks for watching. Oh, frick, it was the wrong castle!